this is a movement practice for our skeletal system to bring in fluidity, hydration in our joints, in our bones, in our marrow. We have, on average, 206 bones in our body. In our feet alone, we have 26 in each. We have 33 vertebrae in our spine. We have 33 joints in our foot. So our skeletal system is responsible for having the levers and joints for movement along with our fascia and our nervous system and our muscular system and everything's connected. And our marrow, our deep, deep waters of our marrow inside our bones builds new blood cells, including red blood cells and white blood cells, <clears throat> and is so important for our immune system. And so this movement practice is a way to bring in awareness and movement into all of our bones and our joints. It is intended to start to free up the fascia connections because our fascia, our connective tissue is encasing every bone is the structure for our skeletal system. And often with gravity and um, life and <laughs> stress, our fascia can get brittle and stiff. And then that can pull our bones out of alignment. And then that's where it can be all sorts of pain, honestly. That's really what it comes down to. Pain or other challenges down the road that could be disc you know, nerve pinching and so on. So the importance of bringing in this movement through our bones and our fascia is so that we can align our structure in gravity. So this practice from the ground up, I'll be getting close to the camera and further away and needing to move it a little bit, is an invitation for you to check in with your own unique body always, always, always. And if there's anything I'm offering that does not feel right for you in this moment to listen to that and come back to what feels good for your body in this moment. However, I do welcome discomfort because what we are doing is bringing in movement to areas that if there isn't a lot of movement in, it could start to feel uncomfortable, like, ooh, that's crunchy and gristly. And that's the fascia being able to release and repattern and create flow. However, if it starts to really be pain, then back off and come back to what feels in alignment for you. So let's start. We're gonna start with our feet and choosing a foot to start coming onto our toes, you can kind of bend the other standing leg and let your toes be relaxed and we're gonna roll around the toes in a big circle. So eight times, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the other direction one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we'll switch feet, come onto their toes, kind of bend the standing leg, this knee, so you're supported. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, other direction, one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Now to our knees, we bend our knees, bring our hands on the kneecaps, and then in one direction doing a circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we'll move up to our hips. Widen your stance, let your arms relax on your sides, kind of bend your knees, and then big hip circles. Eight times, one direction. One. I feel like my body might be hearing some snap, crackles, and pops. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight other direction. One, two, I'm going to show the side because we really want to get wide here. Three, four, so really stick your hips out and back. Five, six, seven, and eight. This next one is our thoracic. So this part of our body tends to be, for most of us, the least flexible in our spine. So we can really break it down. We'll, we'll be doing the circle again. So you can start with puffing chest forward and then to a side, concave into the back, to the other side and forward. So continue with those four points or start to make it into a circle. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, so much grace for this area. It takes a while to get to a whole circle and you can just do the four points to start to then connect those four points in the front, back, and sides together. Okay, now we're moving up to the cervical. You can stay standing for this, but I'm just gonna come forward to show the movement. And so same plane of movement here with the circle. We're gonna keep our head as level as we can with our chin level to the ground. And same thing, you can go forward, side, back, side, shoulders stay relaxed, or start to make that into a whole circle. So that will be two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. And here again, just noticing what feels okay for your neck. You can slow it down. So you don't have to follow my, my counting. And you can do less and work up to the eight. And then the other direction. So either that's a four points or Start to go in a circle. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, I'm seated just for the camera, but you can stay standing if, if you'd like. 
hands come onto your shoulders. You kind of make these chicken wings. And then big circles with the elbows. And one direction to start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now our wrists. One direction to start. Circles. One, two, three, four. You can pretend you're in water. Five, six, seven, eight. Other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to come back to standing. You can see there if you're already there. We're going to balance on a foot. Again, you can kind of bend the standing leg and lift the other leg. And then we're drawing a circle with our toes. One, two, three, a circle in the air. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Other foot. Standing on that leg, kind of bend the knee, and then we will do the circles in one direction. So good for balance too. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's okay to wobble. We're getting information that way. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we're going to stand on one leg and bring the other leg up. And this time we're going to be drawing circles with the knee. So getting more into the hip, one direction to start. So I'm going to show you back here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, other direction. And you can work up to this course of like balanced. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So good for our our joints though to practice the balancing. Okay, other side. Big knee circles. Choose which direction to start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Other direction. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight. I'm gently kicking this plant. Forgive me. <laughs> You're giving me strength for that balance. Thank you. Alrighty, so now we're gonna bring to our hands on our knees again. And this is going to be a standing cat and cow pose. So we're going to lift our heart up, arching our back. You can inhale here. And then exhale round and straighten arms, really tuck your chin. That can be one, two, inhale, arch, lift, 
exhale and heart. Exhale, round three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And now we will be bringing in spinal waves. So starting with our nose leading, you can do this against a wall or with the air. But we start with our nose, chin, chest, ribs, hips, and do a little roll through our whole spine. So nose, chin, chest, ribs, hips. That's two, three, like a wave, four, Five, six, seven, eight. I'm already generating a lot of heat, so you can just notice like what is happening in your body from doing this so far. And so now from our hips, we'll lead the spinal wave reversing that. So from hips, ribs, chest, chin, nose rolling up that way. Hips, ribs, chest, chin, nose. That's two, three, sing connected to your breath, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Now these are side spinal waves leading with our head. And so our head goes, it's like we're a snake. Head and our shoulders follow. We get a nice side stretch here and then we start to turn to the other side. Same thing through the shoulder, the neck, the side stretch. So that's one, two, really bending my knees to go with the movement too. Seven, last one, eight. And now we're gonna reverse that. So lead with the hips, side stretch, and then our head comes up last. And you can bend the knee to go with that. So hip, side stretch, shoulder, then head. So that's one, hip leading this wave now. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Great. So now we're doing arm circles. So we're gonna be doing both at the same time. And so we can just start kind of like forward and back, forward and back on the side like this. And then they'll continue that circle all the way around. And I'm gonna just move this up so you can get more of that view of the arms. So a way to get this to really move and kind of do its centripetal like, cycle of movement is I'm in my feet and then I'm also doing this gentle thing with my, my spine. So it's kind of a little twist to get that moving. So starting, again, you can just start 
forward and back, forward and back, and then eventually they come all the way up to the top and then follow that whole circle. So that's two, three. You can go as slow or fast as you want here. Four, <laughs> five, six. I'll just show a little faster. Seven, eight. And then we'll go the other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So with those, you can start to like bounce with the ground to let the arms come up. And so it's almost like you do this whole thing where it's like it starts to just kind of move on its own. So that's a great way of getting movement in the shoulder girdle. And now you can stay standing, but I'm going to come down here again. We're going to do a different movement with our head, figure eight, with your nose. So it's actually infinity. So an eight on its side. And drawing an infinity with your nose. It's for me three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the other direction, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we'll be doing this forward fold. So I'm really going to bend my knees here. My head is going to roll down and my spine is just going to roll with it. My arms stay relaxed. And I can really bend my knees at the bottom and then reverse that slowly roll back up. Knees can stay bent until you come to a stand and then lift the heart, lift the gaze and keep the lift of the gaze and head as you bend your knees, start to roll, then your head rolls down. Head stays relaxed, arms relaxed, come back up and lift all the way at the top. Chest up, head up, keep lifted. Knees bent and then fold. That's three. And slowly spinal roll back up. That's four. Lift heart. And head starts to roll forward. Five. Here, especially with the low back, really bend knees if needed. You can slow this down if any dizziness happens. Six. Seven. And coming back all the way to the top and lifting heart. Four, eight. And now we're going to come into a horse, kind of like a horse stance, like we're going to ride a horse. And it's a little bit more of that spinal twist here. So knees bent, one to one side. Your hands can just tap the front of your shoulder and the low back gently. So that's Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And your gaze can follow when you're twisting back. Again, if any of this is making the dizzy, we're working the vestibular system too of how to balance and bring in that movement with our, all the waters of our body. So again, 
I'll show that one more time because there's a way you can help with that dizziness if it comes up is find a spot when you're looking in the behind you and just focus on that spot. And then the in between just kind of fuzz the eyes and then have that in focus. All right, so now we'll come to a squat. And depending on your body, of course, it might be just staying kind of up, right? If you do have a deeper squat in your availability within your skeletal system, you can come all the way to a squat. And I'm just gonna rock side to side eight times. So I'm coming up on my feet like so. One, two, and using my arm to widen the standing leg or the foot that's planted. Three, four, again, you can just stay here. You can stay here and lift it. Five, six, seven, eight. Now we're gonna move on to the wrist strengthening. We were doing this, but there's so much that can happen with our wrists with how much we use our hands. So this is a really great mobility practice for our wrists. I'm gonna move it down so you can see. So we're gonna have our wrist shoulder width. And your knees under your hips is the starting place for this. And then we lift the palms and lower back down. So it looks like, so lifting the palms up and it really is a good stretch for the fingers and back down. Some may have a hard time even lifting and that is okay. Again, this is another exercise that takes time to open up all the fascia of our hands, especially if we're doing a lot of things like this. So we'll do this eight times and lower. That would be three now. Four, five, six, Seven, eight. So this next piece for the wrist is we bring the tops of our hands on the earth and we come all the way down over as best we, you know, again, go as far as it feels good in your body, over the hands, and then we come back up and bring your hands into a fist and really squeeze. So that looks like. Back to the hands are on the earth, lower, straighten, and hands into a fist. We'll do that eight times, so that's already two, three, four, five, six. seven, and eight. So good for building that mobility in our hand. Very challenging. So then our, we're gonna just give our toes a nice stretch coming onto our knees and bending our toes. And we're gonna walk up and just rock side to side, giving the bottoms of our toes a nice stretch. Again, there's 33 joints in each foot. Pretty amazing. 33 vertebrae in our spine, around 206 bones in our body. And now we're going to bring it all together with a bone dance, which is really the vertical shape. So now that we've got all that moving and grooving, we are going to bring some balance and movement into our joints. So again, go with what feels good in your body. You can even just have both feet 
planted and lifting the heels. This is a really great way of like, dum, dum, dum. Bring in that percussion up through all of our waters of our body into our marrow, supporting our bones and gravity. I'm really shaking out through my hands. You can start to move your shoulders, move your head, and just let this be a fun bone dance for you. Shaking it all out, shaking it all up. I like to go back and forth, 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 back and forth on my toes, my hands. Really let the hips go, let your head go. Have fun with this. This is for you and your bones. <laughs> Bouncing so hard that the camera fell. But let it be that. Let it be movement in your skeletal system. We're going to be doing this just for 10. You can go as rapid as you want. 9, 8, 7. Let your voice go. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Hmm. And allow that settling, allow that movement. inside your sweet skeletal system. <sighs> and I hope this brings more space, more grace, more freedom in your body. We covered a lot, all of the bones, most of the joints, so Again, this is a practice we can build up to. And if you do this even like three times a week, you will see such fast results because once we start bringing in that consciousness and movement possibilities, a lot starts to open up. So if you have water nearby, highly, highly recommend savoring and ingesting the water to dance with our bones and dance with the deep waters of our marrow within, bringing in that gratitude all the way into our bones. Hmm. 